Hi folks, thanks as always uh, for joining me. I'm Stephen Crown. This is another watercolour demonstration. This is Sutton Park. Um, I went round there about um, nine o'clock yesterday morning, trying to get the place to myself. It was already busy actually at that time, but uh, managed to get a photograph which I've used for this one. So let me show you the, uh, the photograph before I go any further. So we've got our sort of winding path here through to the open ground beyond. Sort of framed by these two banks of trees either side. Got a nice splash of red there, a bit of colour, and then a little bit of a few little details there. So just have to sort of simplify all that and sort of get out get rid of the excess detail. So before I show you the palette, just a quick uh, plug of my book. This is Watercolour Painting Made Simple Volume 3. Um, loads of step by step instructions taking you through each painting. There's nine paintings in there, so plenty for you to have a go at. Um, you'll see it on Amazon, um, hardback, softback, Kindle. Links in the description. So let me show you the colours I've used for this painting. So we've got Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Payne's Grey, didn't use the Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber and Light Red. And just the three brushes, got the large on Rancinae. And then a couple of little rigger brushes, a tiny little one, and then a number three. Whoops. So I don't want to wet the paper too much, just enough to stop it going all crinkly, because I'm not too worried about softening off background colours or anything. So I'm just going to put a, just a very loose raw sienna on there, clean the brush. Then a little bit of ultramarine that we can see. through the uh, trees. Then I'm going to mix those two colours together, raw sienna, and a little bit of, just a hint of yellow in there as well. But it's, it's predominantly blue. And then, these are really far away. These trees on the horizon line. Let's just soak some out with a tissue. Clean the brush and coming slightly further forward, just a raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow in there. And then you've got the fields then just I can only just about see these in the in the photograph. Let's just take a little bit of, just keeping an eye on the water dripping down the paper. We've got a quick dry. I'm going to switch. Now I'm going to really scrape the stuff in. I'm going with the smallest rigger brush I've got, tiny little one. And these are really far away. Some of these. Really distant. Just about see them, trunks and things growing. Then I'm going to switch to the number three rigger. A little bit bigger. A bit of burnt umber in there to the same mix as before. And then this time, these ones are, you can see the difference now with these strokes. Going right up there. And what I'm doing is just holding the end of the brush, trying to get sort of random strokes coming off. I'm going to switch back to the height brush, take out the uh, excess water, scuff it up on the tea towel, and we're going to get into a bit of raw sienna. 
because the brush is dry, you get nice sort of random leaves coming off. That's our sort of autumnal leaves there. Then at the base, a bit of lemon yellow, ultramarine. Bit of burnt umber in um, Payne's grain there as well, just to really make that pop that behind. Bring that down there, something like that. Clean the brush again. And I want to go back to a lighter, a lighter green. So I'm just going to go lemon yellow. Bit of raw sienna in there as well. Bring that down there. Down to where that path is going to go. Bit of light red. That's up there like that. There's also some distant trees over there as well, so it's back to that sort of very bluey green. A little bit wetter than I wanted, but not never mind. Right, that's just a little bit of background and there's going to be loads of tr um, big tree trunks and things coming up there. Now while I've got this, well, while I'm looking at this path, I'm just going to dry the brush. I'm just going to go a bit of red, a bit of blue, and this path's going in like that. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not going to expand on that path any more than that. I think just a quick sweep. Let's just push that green up to it. It's coming down from there as well. Try that brush. Again, that red and blue, just sweep that back over there just to strengthen it again. Right, and now let's put some of these trunks in on this right hand side. First, I'm just going to make sure the paper's flat before I carry on, and then I'll start popping in these big tree trunks. So I'm going to switch to the number three rigger. I'm going to go a bit of brown, a bit of blue, plenty of water, lots of paints. And they're sort of starting off like that. Pressing down, just get a nice broad stroke all the way to the top. And there's a few little Branches coming off sideways, some of them going straight over that, what we did earlier. Right, let's pop another one in, just to the right of it, slightly narrower, slightly further back, just behind this one. And again, a few branches and things coming off. Let's pop another one in, reload the brush, brown, blue. Another one, about the same width again. Brown, blue, reload the brush. Another one over here, this one going slightly towards it. Don't put them all at sort of equal, equal distance from one another, so they're all nice and symmetrical. It just looks not very um, natural. This one's going up there like that. It's just cutting straight across there. I'm going to put one up there. Right, 
Well, let's put some uh, some leaves on now. So I'm just squeezing the water out into the water jar, scuff it up, take off the rest of the paper, water on the uh, tea towel, and then I'm going to go to a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of ultramarine. I'm going to go Payne's grey as well, really strong greeny colour. Also, so it just pushes that raw sienna ones from the previous trees we did right at the beginning. Push them right the way back. It's coming down to about there. They come down quite a long way. And then there's a bit of red down there. And we're back in the should have, should have cleaned the brush down before I did that. Just clean that yellow a little bit. Take the excess water out. Take all the excess water off the palette. I don't like water swishing around on the palette. Right then. Back to these greens. So, lemon yellow. Ultramarine, and then just pushing these up to the, that path. A bit of pine's grey in there. and things growing. Some coming up there like that. Just using my finger now, just scraping a few things. Right then, let's move over to the other side. And again, there's like a whole mass of uh, foliage on this left hand side. Um, let's pop a few limbs in first. So it's back to the number three rigger. I'm going a bit of brown, a bit of blue. There's one down there, starting off down there like that. A bit more water, it's a bit dry that was, wasn't it? Was, was. That's why it wasn't coming off the brush quite as well. Now these are coming at a funny angle, some of them. The one going up there like that. A lot of this will get covered over when I put all the foliage in. Um, there's a, it's a whole tangle, tangled mass of twigs and branches and things growing just on this left hand foreground. I'll pop some up there like that. Pop a few little things up there like that. things up there. I'll just put a few more in before then I go in with the uh, the dry height brush and start brushing in all the foliage. So that'll do for that and then let's clean the brush. Squeeze, I'm just sort of squeezing the water out like that into the water jar and then taking the rest out on the tea towel, scuffing up the ears as I do, just so I get nice and nice random leaf shapes. Let's go with a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. Start off with the lighter ones. Although most of these will end up being dark. That's how they are in the in the reference photo. So let's go into that ultramarine there. Right then, and then finally into the Payne's grey. It's got a really dark. Green, I'm just going like lemon yellow, Payne's grey. A 
to let's clean the brush. Let's just get a little bit of lighter colour down in the foreground. Brushing some of that, the raw sienna. Right now, I'm just starting to think now. As usual, this photograph, um, it was a dull day. Um, so I'm just wondering now where to start putting the shadows. But first, just a few more little darks down there. I think. Just a splash of red as well. Look, there, that was, I just wanted that subtle and it's come off, come off too strong. I'm just going to paint just straight over it, just that lemon yellow, ultramarine, paints grey. Right, flick a few things in there. Make sure it's flat, and now I'm going to start thinking about these shadows. Reclip that there with these bulldog clips. Give it a quick dry. Right in. Shadows. So I'm thinking maybe coming from this sort of direction. So how we get on. So I'm just going to mix a very simple shadow mix. Not too much water on the brush. A bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. Mix them together. Something like that. Right, and now let's work out where our shadows are coming from. So I'm going to have start off with some coming across the, the path like that. Maybe somewhere else as well. A few down there, a few shadows. Down there, a few amongst all this lot there. A quick dry. There's no figure in the photograph, but I'm going to put one in. I'm just going to switch to the little brush. Um, just a simple dark, a bit of brown, a bit of blue. I'm just going to stick someone just up here, I think. Just down there, a little dog just walking off. I'm just going to do a couple of shadows off them. Uh, obviously, they need to go in the same direction, which is sort of going this way diagonally. Little bird flying up over the trees, and I'm going to call that one finished, I think. Just finish it off with a signature. Just pop my name. 
I'm going to put my nine down here out of the way. And I'm going to call that one done. So let's stick a, a mount on that now and see what it looks like. So here's our finished painting. So if I just show you the, the, the can you see that easily? Um, without too much, ref, uh, there's a lot of reflection on the glass, but hopefully you can see the um, reference photograph. Change one or two things, not too much. Just keep the you know the essence of the scene. Remember, we only ever use the the photograph as a general reference. These are only like impressions of the scene. So you can see very simple sky, a bit of raw sienna, um, ultramarine. You can see where I've left loads of light bits to represent like clouds and things, and then done the distant trees and bushes and things in that same colour, that blue, which pushes it right back into the distance. And then the first things I was doing was these, these trees here with that sort of raw sienna look to them. Um, so I popped those in. I've done them a little bit bigger than they are in the photograph. And it have also sort of opened up this central area as well. So you can see I've just stepped inside actually so you don't get the glare. You can see the photograph better now. Um, so you can see, yeah, it was a bit, a bit cluster, claustrophobic sort of around here. So I've just opened this up a little bit. Then we've got our path sneaking, snaking its way right past these trees there and into the fields beyond. So there's the path. It's sort of, as I say, just sort of winds its way. A bit of light red ultramarine in there. Which our little figure there and his dog. Um, but the rest of the painting, obviously put these in first. There are a few more sort of very bluey green trees. Again, helping pushing back into the background. And then we've got our big, put in with the uh, number three rigger, pop the trunks in first, then sort of dry brush all the foliage in, put it in nice and dark here just to push that uh, raw sienna stuff back into the distance. Same on the left hand side, scraped out loads of things with the nail. Just a little bit of red in there again for just a splash of colour. And then these sort of two banks of trees sort of frame the scene. As the path works its way through, so oh, and then not forgetting the the shadows. Try to keep them fairly subtle. You see a few one cutting across there, another one there, and you've got a few shadows from these bushes here in the middle ground. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for uh, watching. Please leave your comments down in the description. Um, loads of videos over on Patreon if you want to see me over there. Um, books are on Amazon. All this, all the links are in the description. So until next time, thanks for watching. Keep practicing. And I'll see you again soon.